Hey guys, welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. I'm here today with my man Luke. Now I want you to understand this. Everybody, this is super important. The last three years, this is the number one solar cells rep in the nation. I didn't say in a state, I said in the nation. Dude, so you're, you're watching the number one dude. Now listen, I love the movie Rocky. I love it when people can be overcomers. I love seeing people get over tough times, get through adversity. Dude, this guy's got a crazy story. Then we're going to get to how he became number one in the nation. He's going to give you the tips, the tricks, the tools, exactly what he does. But this guy's overcame it all. So guys, this is the podcast. Not only that will change your life, that will inspire you like never before, but you're going to meet a dude that's just crushing it and he's the greatest. So I like to study Kobe Bryant in basketball because he was the best. And if you love sales, you're about to study the number one sales solar rep in the country. I don't get what I want, I get what I need Every single day I'm heading off to my dream And I get everything that I damn well please I don't give a damn if you all listen to me Cause I run it Alright guys, so really here we go it. I'm here today with my man Luke I'm not gonna talk a lot This guy's gonna rip it I told him, I said Before you tell us the big picture All this badass stuff that's going on now That everybody's gonna be like Tell me, how'd you become number one? How'd you do it again? How'd you do it again? Well, I said, dude, tell us your story. We want to learn you. And I know he's an underdog. He's just like me. So he's my brother. So, hey, I appreciate you being here today. Yeah. Dude, Luke, let him have it. Tell us what's up. Where did you Where did you start, man? Give us the Give us the baby. Yeah, so blessed to be here, man. Blessed to be here. I should be in prison somewhere. So appreciate you inviting me here. Um, it's kind of, kind of what the accumulation of what my life has been. So kind of the story was I grew up dirt poor. Uh, my dad was nowhere in the picture. And so... Grew up with a single mom living off of welfare, like we were on Idaho housing, food stamps, uh, government cheese, that type of stuff. And um, I always had this uh, this idea that I was less than, right? When we'd be in school, I'd be terrified when they were calling on the kids and like, hey, what do your parents do? Like, uh, my dad, uh, my dad, uh, I don't know where my dad's at. My mom uh, lives off the state. And so, you know, I always, I felt this inadequacy. So my whole life I felt inadequate. And so... You know, going through school, I was always in trouble. I was always getting in fights. I was always a, pro a troublemaker. Part of it is I had a lot of energy, and it was directed in the wrong things, right? Mm -hmm. And so I ended up um, ended up just getting a lot of trouble, just staying with my mom. And eventually, I, I, I found drugs when I was 13, man. And so that was my solution. So crazy. That was my solution, bro, because, you know, I got all this crazy stuff going on in my head. This is a pain, anguish, and feelings of less than. And so eventually, when I found drugs, it was my solution. And it was my solution for a very long time. And uh, the problem was, is that the solution became a bigger problem than what I was trying to solve. When we run away from, I found out when I ran, run away from my, my, uh, my problems um, and I try to seek something out that's going to mask them, the problems become magnified because I don't deal with the shit in my life. And mm -hmm. so that's kind of what I did. And so at 13, I started going to jail. I was in juvie at 13. And then I kind of perpetuated that my entire life. So it was always going to jail, get out of jail, cause havoc, do drugs, go back to jail time and time and time and time again. And uh, by the time I was 16, I was homeless. So I was living on the streets in uh, Eugene, Oregon. I was absolutely homeless, living under a bench and, um, and doing drugs. I was much more willing to pay for my drugs than it was for having a place to stay. And uh, I ended up getting arrested and I ended up doing a year in jail. So they put you in not big kid jail, but little kid jail. And I did a year, right? So I, I did a year out there. I got back out. And I continued to do what I always did, which was, you know, running and gunning. And um, eventually uh, I became 18. And when you become 18, you go to the big boy jail. And, uh, and that's what I did. So I was 18 years old. I cop copped a charge for selling drugs. I would sell drugs to, to use drugs. And I, I got a charge and I went to jail. I went to prison for a year. And, uh, and I made a monumental change. I had kind of a religious awakening. I found God, concept of God that worked with me at the time. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired, and so I was willing to latch on to anything, right? And, and I ended up finding this relationship with, uh, with God. And, and uh, I got out, and I stayed clean for a little while, but then the pain of all of this unresolved issues I, that I wasn't dealing with came back to haunt me, and I ended up, I ended up going, get, 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 getting into drugs again. And I know my cycle. I do drugs, I lose everything, I get homeless, and I go back to prison, right? I think God kind of saves me by giving me jail. If left unchecked, I'd be dead, right? Left unchecked, so and crazy. so... Eventually, I got uh, eventually I, I, I got uh, I got in trouble again. Got some new drug charges. I got a commercial drug charge. Went back to prison. Went to prison again. And um, and uh, I was in there for two years, bro. This was like I was like 20 years old, bro. 20 years old. So my early stage of life was homelessness, dereliction, and jails, right? And prisons, like a worthless existence. And um, and I ended up going back to jail. I went to prison again for two years. I got out. 
And I was like, well, the first time I went to jail, I was like, had this religious awakening. I had God. And then I was like, God failed me. I'm not going to do God again. I'm going to be a convict. And, and I got out. And uh, what did I do? I started doing the same stuff I was doing before. And I eventually I got another charge. But this is what happened. This is the monumental change. I was homeless, living in Eugene, Oregon again. I was living in a, um, uh, they have this dentist office and they had these, these window wells, right? You know what a window well is? Mm -hmm. And I would sleep in there. And at 7 a.m. I had to wake up and get out of there before they opened up the office. Because if they opened up the office, they'd call the cops on me, right? That was my existence. I would hustle all day, get drugs, and then just be isolated and alone. It was a terrible existence, one of, of pain and strife and sorrow and dereliction. And, um, and eventually I got arrested. I went back to jail. And I was in a county jail. It was Lincoln County, Oregon. I was in Lincoln County Jail. And I remember sitting there. And I, and I said, uh, I can't continue to live like this, man. I can't do this anymore. Hey, guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. And I hit my knees. And I prayed, I said, you know what, What didn't? I know this has never worked before, but I need you to show me how to live. I can't continue like this any longer. And it was a plea for help. It's literally a desperate plea for help. I couldn't continue to do this. I was only 25 years old. Couldn't continue to live like this. And um, and I went to jail. I was only three months in jail and I got back out and, and I got high again. And I moved back to my mom's house uh, in the lower level suite, otherwise known as the basement. And uh, I was in there and I was doing drugs and I was working with a guy that was telling me that he'd been clean for like seven years. I didn't believe he'd actually been clean because my idea, if he got clean, like he smoked weed or he did pills or something, he wasn't a, he wasn't a addict like I was. And he said he'd been clean for seven years and he planted a seed, right? He planted a seed of hope. And uh, eventually I got high in my mom's house. It no longer worked. The drug stopped working. I couldn't mask the pain anymore. And I walked down to a 12 step meeting and I opened up my mouth in the meeting and said, my life is shit. I'm saving up enough money. When I get back to prison, I could buy a television. That was my ambition at the time. When I got back to prison, I got a television. The first time I didn't get that. And I walked in that room, and I just was honest. And I was vulnerable. And I opened up. And uh, I didn't try and, you know, put on this facade of who I was. I got real. And um, some people came up to me after the meeting. They said, hey, we appreciate what you shared about. This is what we do. Do you want to come play cards with us tomorrow? And uh, I said, what? And you're like, There's, someone's going to let me in their house? Most of the time, nobody would want me around them because I would rip you off. And uh, I went and played cards the next day, and I made a decision just to do this one day at a time. And so that was in November 18th of 2006, mm. and I've been clean since then. And so my life has evolved and changed ever since then. So I got clean. It wasn't fucking rainbows and butterflies. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. But it was dealing with the shit of my past and understanding that, that the running away from my problems magnifies them. And dealing with the things as I come and learning how to live. I was 26 years old. I would never had my driver's license, bro. Never had a driver's license. I'd had one place in my entire life. Most of it was like running and gunning and living on the streets and couch to, to jail cells. And so, you know, eventually I started piecing my life together, started piecing my life together once, one, one day at a time. And eventually, you know, I got some clean time under my belt. And uh, even in clean time, I had like two years clean. And I remember thinking, dude, I was working a construction job. I was a roofer, not selling roofs, actually doing the roof. It's a hard ass job, especially now. You got to shovel the snow off, repaper it. You got to burn it off with a weed burner. Hope you don't slip off the roof. They didn't even recognize how amazing I am and make me the boss. And so they said, listen, and I was working this job. And I remember it was like it was in the wintertime, so I didn't have a lot of money and I couldn't really afford rent. And so my girlfriend had to pay rent. And it was just like really embarrassing. And I was at a low point. I wasn't going to go back and get high because I know that that's jails, institutions and death. But what I ended up making, I made a decision. Uh, one of my buddies was at, the, uh, at this event we went to. and He said, hey, I read a book. And I said, and he said, it changed my life. And he was like happy and joyous and free. And I was like, well, what book was it? And he says, it was the book called The Secret. And I said, okay, mm -hmm. I'll read it. I went home. I got the book. I read that book in one day, like boom, plowed through it. And it changed my perspective. Um, they always say with, with new information becomes a new vantage point. And I realized at that point that all my life, the accumulation of my life had been a construct. I created my life. I'm not a victim. You know, having growing up like that, those are challenges, but really it creates resiliency and better character, right? I use that stuff now for fuel. I don't use that stuff as a crutch to reason excuses on how I'm being. I use that stuff now to propel me forward mm -hmm. and look at where, who I was and who I am today. I read that book and I read a series of books and I've been reading books ever since then that changed the tra tra trajectory of my life. Two years later, my buddy was selling alarms. I was living in Idaho, he was selling alarms. He was doing door-to-door -door alarm sales and he was doing it down here in Arizona. 
and he was telling me, dude, I made $8,000 in a week. And I was like, dude, what? You got to understand, I made $22,000 for the entire year uh -huh. working 40-hour work weeks. So I was like, what are you talking about? I just bought a house. I just had a baby. And um, so he told me this, and I just knew that I was so much more. I knew I was so much more. I knew that my life was How, how old were you when you got into alarm doors? I was 28. Is that 2006? That was 2008. Mm. Right at the recession. Mm -hmm. And he told me he was doing this. And, and uh, so I, I, I kind of got the idea. I got this inkling. In my, I knew that I was so much more. I knew I had so much more potential in me. And reading books and, and setting myself up for this. I had set myself up for about a year and a half of what I wanted to do. I had new ideas, new information. I finally thought that I could break through. I just didn't have the circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, that God, you can call it the universe, you can call it whatever you want, creates these circumstances in our life. And it's up to us to have the courage to take advantage of those things, mm -hmm. right? It was up to me. I could have been like, no, 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 I just bought a house. I just had a baby. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to make $1,700 a month, and I'm happy because I got what I want. But I, I wanted so much more. I wasn't living up to my potential. And so I ended up uh, quitting my job. I'm like, I quit. And I came down here to Arizona. We went down to Yuma, Arizona for the first Blitz trip. And I'd never sold anything in my entire life except for drugs, right? I was pretty good at that. Yeah. But I came down here to Arizona, and I studied the training manual. He gave me a training manual. He's like, here, do this and do that and do this. And I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I had this insatiable desire. And we see this in very many top performers like yourself. Mm -hmm. We have this desire, right? We want to be the top. We want to be the best. We want to know the information. We just want to be good at what we do. I plowed through that training manual. And then I came down here in October of 2008, and I came down to a hotel, micro hotel in Yuma, Arizona, and there was a whole crew of people. There's like 50 people out there, and I was roomed up with some guy, and I was reading the training manual every day. Mm -hmm. Now, what I would do is I'd go out on the doors at 9 a.m., right? This guy was still sleeping. My roommate, everybody else was still sleeping. I was plowing through the doors. I'd come home at 10, 11 o'clock at night. Everybody was partying there next door, having lunch, you know, having dinner, doing all these other things. Mm -hmm. I, was, I would go home, I would come back into my room, I'd read the training manual. That first week, I was the top sales rep. Never had sold an alarm in my life, door-to-door wow. -door sales. Top sales rep, my first paycheck was $10,000. Never looked back, dude. That's Never so looked crazy. back. I was like, dude, you're, gonna, you, you're telling me I get paid for going and walking around and talking to people right now. This is easy. I was a maroofer. And so, but having that, having that experience, though, it does something different than a lot of career salespeople do, do right? Career salespeople, they know they have this, this opportunity to go sell somebody and make and do an exchange, a value proposition, and make money. Mm -hmm. But I understand the value of like real manual labor, right? And not getting paid a whole lot for it. And it gives me an attitude of gratitude, which really propels me forward. Listen, all you gotta all I gotta do is go get rejected all day. I can do that all day. I'm not even gonna get tired. I can mm -hmm. outwork anybody. And so the mentality mindset that was instilled in me is I'll just outwork everyone else. I wasn't the best sales guy. Yeah. There was no way I was the best. There was way more talented people there, but they were sleeping. They were at, at the they were back at the restaurant eating. I was working. I was plowing through the training manuals. I had an insatiable desire. I knew that I just bought a house. I just had a baby. I had to work no matter what. I had to pay for this stuff. I wasn't going to fail. And I had this determination and this commitment mm -hmm. and stuff that's kind of propelled me throughout my career. And now, fast forward, now we go to that first, uh, it was October, so October, November, December, you know, I, I cleared 60 sales. So I made close to, I made close to $60,000 just in those three months. So Dude, I had only made $22,000 the entire year before working a construction job. So I was like, dude, what's the potential of this? And so that next year, you know, like I was like, I'm going to be good at this. I was going to be good at this. Mm -hmm. And so that was in 2009. I was the number one. I was the number one alarm rep for that company. Wow. And it was probably top top 10 percent in the entire nation. So I sold 327 alarms. You know, it was just my hard work and my dedication and stuff. And I think that's a common ingredient between anybody that's successful. Listen, we go through these numbers, right? You, you suck at first. And if you can get past that learning curve, getting your ass kicked, getting rejected, if you can get past that learning curve and just kind of handle the rejection and just and just have that commitment and that desire, we learn, right? You're going to learn from those failures. Mm -hmm. Failure is the best teacher. And so I failed my way forward. And literally that next year, I was the number one solar. I was the number one alarm rep. And then I was the number one rep next year, the next year, the next year. I was never not the number one uh, uh, alarm rep in that company ever. So crazy. So, yeah, dude. So, like, the, the thing is, is the common degree. When I, when I recruit reps, this is what I look for. I'm like, dude, you can be the dumbest guy. You can be not good looking. I don't care what, you, I don't, I don't care what your, your mentality is. All I care about is one thing. What's your commitment level? What's your discipline level? Do you have commitment and discipline? Do you have a dream? Can you buy into this dream? And if you find people with those commonalities, those mm -hmm. are the people that are going to be good in, yeah. in what we do. Bottom line. Because we learn. We, we fail forward. 
and we learn from our mistakes and we get better and we improve. Well, number one, anybody watching this, that's like a, it's like an Andy Elliott number two with energy, fire, uh, conviction, passion, belief. Obviously, you've mastered um, what you do, but the fact that you came out, you said one of the things that you did is you outworked everybody. You weren't the smartest. You weren't the best. I feel like that's how all successful pe people are. They're the hardest worker in the room, and they just never quit, right? Like you just always. One hundred percent. So that's my comment. That's my that's my secret weapon, man. I just outwork everybody, and so I just outwork. Like, what are they doing? How are they successful? You can look and and we can we can do don't do a comparison because it's a thief of joy. But we can see what are they doing. Where's the basement and where's the ceiling? What are they doing? How are they doing it? And we can kind of duplicate that. But listen, if some guy's willing to work eight hours a day and get these amazing results, how many more hours a day do you have to work to get those desired results? Mm -hmm. Now, I got to be honest with you, like 98% of the people don't have that, that, that commitment. 98% of the people just fall short of that. They don't have that level you, of uh, insatiable desire. How would you, how would you tell someone to create that? I mean, I, I don't know your story or how, how you got yours, but it sounds to me like just, you know, you, you didn't want to stay the same anymore and you wanted to change. You said when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, maybe that's why your commitment level increased so high because you're like, dude, there ain't no way I'm going back. Like, how do you create a higher commitment level? Do you so so the, here's how, like, the, 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 that's, a, win like that's that. an amazing question. It's an amazing question because you just wonder how, like, how can I create that in somebody? So I think some of it's innate, like, like growing up poor, man, growing up government cheese, being embarrassed, all that shit. Dude, I didn't want that, man. I wanted a life of opulence and abundance. And, and I wanted to take all of this. I wanted to, to, to be able to grasp everything that this world has. Mm -hmm. And so and then also the competitive nature of myself. I'm super competitive. So, like, I will never be outworked ever, 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 ever. If someone's outworking me, I'm like, dude, I'm going to get up earlier than you. There's no way you're going to beat me. I'm going to outwork you. I might not outsell you, but I'm going to outwork you. And so... What we see as a common theme is you have to have some sort of competitive nature inside yourself. And you also got to have a desire and a belief in something greater than yourself. Like, what can you achieve? What, what are your goals? What are your dreams? What are your ambitions? Like, do they keep you up at night? Will they, will they wake you up in the morning? Will they make you work even when you don't want to work anymore? Will they get, let you get out of that car door even when you don't want to get out of the car door? When you go and check, you want to, you want to check on social media or you want to text somebody back or email somebody back. Are you willing to just put that in your pocket and go to work? Like, what, what's keeping you up at night? Mm -hmm. And so when I was granted this opportunity, first I realized the potential. I'm like, dude, how much? I got paid $500 a sale, bro. $500 a sale. Very small change in comparison to sold. I was like, 500 Dude, I calculated everything. Like, if I wanted the cost, how many deals do I got to sell to make $500 a sale? But the thing costs, you know, 10000 bucks. You got to sell, you know, got to sell uh, 20 alarms. Yeah. 20 alarms. How, 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 fa you know, how fast can I do this? How fast can I do this? And so ultimately, everything was calculated like that. But the, here's the other thing, too. Like, the monetary-wise, if you would have given me, if I would have been making millions of dollars, I wouldn't have stopped. Like, so often, and we see this in every industry, like, somebody will set a monetary goal. I want to make a million dollars, okay? That's the monetary goal. I want to make a million dollars. As soon as they make a million dollars, what do they do? They're like, oh, I made my money. They're going to take a vacation three, four months, right? Yep. That's a waste of time, bro. I've never been like that. Like mine is always a numerical number. So like last year, I sold 377 solar deals, right? Mm. This is massive. Most guys are doing 100 deals a year, if that. Mm -hmm. Top of the top doing 100 deals. I set out my goal. as like, I'm going to sell, I'm going to sell 300 deals. So by October, I had hit 300 deals, right? October, wow. I could have taken a vacation from October all the way to the end of the year and started anew. But I was like, how many deals can I get? What can I do if I continue the same trajectory? I ended up with 377. These are like godlike numbers, right? These are incredible numbers. And so I set the, the, what was possible. Now, blood, sweat, and tears and sacrifice, mm -hmm. I had to make them all. I had to make a ton of sacrifices. I had to work my ass off. I had to be like, you know, burnt out. And I'm still pushing myself, but ultimately it was coming down to what goal did I set and, and what was, and what was the possibility, the capability of that. But what I always tell guys is don't set, set a monetary goal, but make it super hard to get. Like, don't set something like, oh, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars, get a hundred thousand dollars and you take the rest of the year off. Mm -hmm. Set something that scares the shit out of you. The, year, the, the goal last year scared the shit out of me, man. I was terrified, bro. I was like, how am I going to do this? I was strategically coming. And then I reverse engineered it. What do I got to do to get that? I got to get seven deals a week, every single week, no matter what, all, 50, all 52 weeks of the year to be able to achieve this accounting attrition. And so, you know, I think that so often in this industry, in sales industry, we get stuck on the monetary. Once we meet that, we're like, oh, I'm going to take, I work real hard. I want to take the last three months off. And then you lose that snowball effect. We were kind of talking about this, you know, snowball. 
like kind of where you're at, dude, snowball, boom, 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 boom. And, and you keep building, 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 building. If you just take some bunch of time off, post no content for six months, what's going to happen with the business? It might grow, but it's not going to grow to the level that, you're, that, that, that it was growing at when you were putting in all the work. Hey guys, we'll get back to the video in a sec. If you're watching this video because you want to level up in life and business, then one thing you got to do is optimize your sleep. One in three people worldwide reported not getting enough good sleep every night. A big part of the why? Mouth breathing. Luckily for you, our sponsor Hostage Tape is your best friend when it comes to sleeping. If you're like me, you've probably also struggled with everything from insomnia, dry mouth, restlessness, snoring, headaches, sore throat, and even waking up with mental fog and grogginess because of mouth breathing by sleeping and didn't even know it. Poor sleep affects essentially every area of your health, wealth, and happiness. With hostage tape, you simply peel off a piece of breathable fabric, place it over your mouth before bed, and voila, several hours later, you wake up feeling refreshed and energized. If you're ready to feel focused, clear-minded, and energized, go to HostageTape.com and use code PASSION for 20% off your order today. Thanks to Hostage Tape for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the show. Yeah, you start to lose your edge. Yeah, dude, it's like, it, 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 and you start to lose your edge. So and how, how old are you? I'm, I'm 43. Okay. So guys, so number one, super important right now, and I want him to keep rolling because he's just ripping, but I want to tell you guys something. From the way he grew up to being 13, getting on drugs, like literally being homeless, like in and out of juvie, then going to jail. And then he talked about cycles and patterns, which is like everybody has cycles and patterns, but he identified his. Got close to God, literally um, found a sales job. And dude, just look who he is today. Like, isn't that cool? Like, this is what life is about. Um, now, I do want to tell you guys, he coaches so if you're in the solar industry, I need you to listen up right now. We have, thou we have hundreds of thousands of solar reps, uh, companies, teams all around the world. And they're always looking, obviously, you're only as good as your team. An individual can be beat, but a team can't beat. To run a great solar organization, you want to make sure your whole team is great. But there's a lot of guys, this is a solar boomer in. Right. Like a lot of these solar guys, rush, yeah. I mean, imagine this, like a couple good years could just change your whole life forever. Yeah, 100%. yeah, so like I want you guys to do me a favor. In the description box below, he coaches teams and solar reps how to kill it and crush it. Look at his energy. Look at his passion. But look at the black and white, his results. Number one in the nation, last three years running. If you guys go down there and you click the link in the description box, you guys can actually get set up with him. He will train you. He'll train your team. If you're an individual, I don't care if you're 18 years old. I don't care if you're 45 years old. I don't care if you're not in solar. If you're watching this and you're like, dude, I want to make a million a year. This guy makes millions. If you're like, I want to make a million a year. Cool. Go buy his training. He will show you how to do what he's doing. He will coach you. You go get a solar job, you'll kill it. Hell, man, you could probably go and train with him and he'll show you how to make millions and you could probably work with him on his team. It's endless. But guys, do me a favor at this time. I want to keep rolling, but you guys can click on the link below. I know a lot of you guys right now, I was talking to, to Tim Grover this morning, but I'll tell you guys something. Women, winning comes with a price. Winning comes with a price. And if you don't pay the price, you don't win. And so many people are hoping for a better life. They're hoping to make more. They're hoping to, for stuff to change. And if you don't pay the price, you don't get it. And I always say, like, winning doesn't recognize you. Like, dude, I know why you're so hungry. I know why you're so driven. Dude, you grew up through the freaking crap, okay? It seems like, but not everybody has that story. A lot of people have had a good life. They have right. good parents. They don't come from a broken family. They didn't have to go to jail. They didn't have to get embarrassed. Right. You know, like you said, you know, when they said, hey, what do your parents do? And you're like, dude, I don't even want to tell no one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, I get that. Me and you have a real similar story. And a lot of people that are like you out there right now, maybe it wasn't as bad or maybe it was worse. Like, dude, they deserve to have a badass like life like you have. And we're in an era right now where you guys can literally click that link and you guys can be training with them within seconds. Like, this is it, guys. The earning opportunity in solar is massive right now, but I will tell you, if you're not trained by the right person, you'll never make that money, okay? So you guys, if you want to kill it and crush it, make sure you guys click on that link and you guys can train with him and, and you guys can physically can be mentored by him, which is amazing. And if he can do it, remember we were talking earlier? He's like, dude, if I can do it, he's like, I'm living proof. Yeah. He's like, they can do it. Let me just coach him and it's over. So, uh, so let's, so let's keep ripping a little bit. What does your life look like now? You live in Arizona. Yep. Yep. I do. Right? So I got, uh, what, I got, what is your I got Instagram? a life beyond my wildest dreams. Can, can you give your Instagram? Yeah, I know you just uh, started kind of building it a little yep, bit, but tell me your Instagram started. in case they want to DM you or it's uh, a Luke Ward official. 
Yep. So Luke Ward official. Official. Yep. That's on Instagram. Instagram handle Luke Ward official. You guys go follow him. You guys can DM him. If you guys have any questions, you can message him. But obviously, I want you guys to train with him. Um, but tell us a little about uh, what's going on now, right? So, dude, I'm living a life beyond my wildest dreams. Yeah, you got bro. a beautiful wife. So I got I got to create new goals and aspirations because I look at my life today like I have stuff that I never even dreamed possible. I, I had goals and stuff. They would have t- talked to me 10 years ago. I was like, oh, what's that? I don't, they, I don't even know if I want that. But now I have all of these other things, and now I have to reset my goals. I, re- I have to reset my basement because I've already achieved all of this stuff. I, I live in a multi-million dollar home. I have a badass boat that I love. Go out every Sunday. Go to Lake down the street here, man. It's absolutely incredible. I got a wife beyond my wildest dreams, bro. She is amazing. You met her, bro. You know yeah, how amazing she bad. is. She is incredible. She's such an incredible supporter. I've got kids that I get to be an amazing father to, something that I didn't get. You know, I get to change some of this past generational sins and stuff of, of my of my parents. And so, um, you know, my life is one of uh, uh, living beyond my, uh, uh, my wildest dreams. But here's the thing, though. I've achieved all these personal results. And so it comes down to two years ago, I was at my company and I was being celebrated for being the number one solo rep again, right? At my company, at an awards banquet. Mm-hmm. I had one guy get on stage. So I had... One guy, two guys got on stage. One guy get on stage, and he was under the top, top, top five. But what I realized is, like, getting that achievement was fulfilling, but seeing somebody that I helped was way more fulfilling, bro. Yeah. That was way more lasting. Me getting an award and be like, hey, yeah, I got it, I did it. Um, you know, it was accumulation of all the blood, sweat, and tears that I had already put in through that year. It was the finalization and finally being recognized for that. But, you know, the, the year last year, I decided, like, this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate and I'm going to focus on building people up. Mm-hmm. And so, like, this year we had three people that were in the top five. So four of the five people were my guys, right? Four of the five. And so I've taken guys, um, kind of talked about this a little bit. I, I took a guy named Peyton. Dude, this kid's awesome. He's 25 years old. He made $780,000 last year. When we met this guy, he was making $20,000 a year working a landscaping job. Mm. He came from a good family. He came from a really good family. They're really religious. They're studying Lutheran. Very good, disciplined, committed. All of these other things. He didn't have like this stuff, but he wanted more. He was committed and he was disciplined. I showed him the blueprint, and, and now he's being able to do that. He just bought a million-dollar house here in Scottsdale. Dude, he's living a life beyond his dreams. He married this amazing, incredible woman. Um, he drives a Range Rover. I mean, all of these other things. It's literally dreams to reality. It's one of my email hand. It's one of my handles and stuff on my uh, Snapchat. It's dreams to reality. So, you know, I, I, I firmly believe that. And, and just kind of back up a little bit how I got into solar. So, let's, COVID happened, right? Mm-hmm. Shit. Locking everybody down. I own an alarm company at this point. So, I started an alarm company in 2013. We're doing decent. We're like number one year we were top five in in Brinks uh, in and Brinks. I was a dealer for Brinks. Mm-hmm. We're number five, but what ended up happening? Just slowly kind of going back and forth, and then COVID happened, and it's based in California, based in Bakersfield, California. Mm. People were getting good. arrested for knocking doors, bro. This is my model: is knocking doors is the best way. We're bringing the product to the customers. People were getting arrested, and so I'm like, oh shit. And this was in March, and then in April we switched our production here, and then what happened in April? We got locked down here, right? Mm-hmm. Locked down. I met the owner of the company I work for uh, now. I met him at uh, main event. I was taking my kids to go play laser tag. Mm-hmm. Coincidentally, not a coincidence, I ended up talking to the, the, the owner of the company. There was a bunch of guys that were having their, their Christmas party there. They had a bunch of guys running around in Fusion Power shirts. And I was like, oh, I'll talk to this guy. And I was like, hey, dude, I got a customer base of 8,700 customers in California. I'd like to sell them solar. We made this connection back in December. Now, fast forward. Here it is, April, and I'm like, oh, shit, what am I going to do? How am I going to bring in revenue? I can't, even, I can't even generate accounts. We were exclusively door-to-door. That's it. We didn't have any other, uh, any other marketing strategies. Crazy. And so um, I ended up like solar. I, I kind of understood. I understood the game. I knew how much money was involved. People were telling me. I never dipped my toe in there because what I was doing was working, right? It was kind of mm-hmm. like comfortable, which is a very scary spot, bro. Yeah. Don't, I, don't, I don't ever get comfortable. I try to force myself to be uncomfortable because I was comfortable making an income. So COVID, actually, I was pissed about it because it locked everybody down. I thought it was stupid as shit. I was mad. I was resentful. But here's the silver lining. It forced me to look for another avenue. Mm. So now take in mind, I didn't know know how you got paid in solar. I didn't know how it worked. I knew you just collected sun. I didn't know shit about solar. I had no idea about the presentation. I had no idea about anything. And uh, in April that year, I reached out to Tyler and I was like, hey, bro, how does this work? And he's like, well, listen, hey, you come on, you do this training, you get this, you get this, but we're locked down right now. We're not having guys to go door to door. We're doing the phone. Never been on the phone. Never done phone sales. I was like, I'm going to try it out. And so that month of April, I was on the dialer, bro. I landed like six accounts in April on the dialer, not knowing how it worked. I didn't know the presentation. I didn't know how to pitch it. 
Yeah, you know, we are cold, cold calling we people. Working hard. Fucking working hard. But I'm, dude, like, I, I'm decent at sales, bro. So I can figure it out. Give me something, I'll figure it out. Normally, we have a mentor program where you come into the organization, you train under the mentor that shows you everything. I skipped all that. Didn't know anything about the software, figured it all out. And in that first month, I sold six deals. And I saw the amount of money that was available in solar. I was like, mm -hmm. dude, I could be a single solar guy, not any team, and make twice as much as what I'm pulling in owning an alarm company. From that point, I was like, screw alarms, bro. I'm never going to do this shit again. There's way more money in there. And this is way more advantageous. It's a win, win, win. Customer wins, utility company wins, and the company wins, and the rep wins. Everybody wins in that relationship, which I yes. love. Yes. I look for win wins. And so, and at that point, so in May, I come on and I'm, I'm working this organization. I got six sales. The leader of the, the company has 62 sales. I got six, not knowing what I'm going to do, but my hard work always pays off. I come into that organization. I went to the sales meeting. I was kind of embarrassed because I was like, dude, how's this guy getting five sales this week? How the hell did he do it? It's beyond me. I didn't know how he did it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to be the number one sales guy here this year, this year. Now, keep in mind, I had six. The other guy had 60. I told the owner, I was like, dude, I'm going to be the number one sales guy here. Just watch. And he's like, ha, 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 ha. Because nobody, usually you make it 30, 60 days and you quit. I'm like, I'm going to be the number one sales guy here. And I just put my nose down the grindstone. I'd come out here in Arizona. 2020 was the brutalest year we've had. 120 degrees every single day. I'd yeah. go to work at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I'd put two frozen bottles in my pocket of water. And I'd walk, to, I'd walk the streets. I'd pick a guy up. We'd go out and knock. We'd knock until 8, 9 o'clock at night, and mm -hmm. I did that every single day, six days a week, for the entire rest of the year. Wow. At the end of the year, the awards banquet, was the number one solar rep there. Mm. I figured it out, but here's how I figured it out. I figured it out by failing forward, dude. Mm -hmm. I didn't wait till I had everything figured out. I didn't get paralysis through analysis. Listen, I'm going to do this. I'll figure it out, and I'm going to make it happen. And I just put I just put my nose down the grindstone. Mm -hmm. And so that first year, I was like, boom, 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 boom. And I got 117 sales in that first year. And so I was awarded at the, at the, at the and, I, and, and, you know, it was the, the award ceremony is kind of a culmination of all the blood, sweat, and tears we did. It's like the big hurrah. But people don't see what we did. They don't see Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant being at practice at 4 a.m., two hours before anybody else, how much they outworked everybody. We don't ever see that shit. We see their accolades and their awards and the ceremonies. We don't see all the shit that they did, right? We hear about it years later. But here's what I did. I was, dude, I sweated my ass off with frozen bottles of water in my pocket six days a week to get to that point. Mm -hmm. I was willing to do what everybody else wasn't willing to do. I've always been willing to do what someone else wasn't willing to do. Mm -hmm. In fact, I thrive on that. Like, you're not going to work a lot. Watch me. I'll do it. And so that year, that 117, the next year, I sold 285 accounts. I was the number one solar rep in the nation. Number one solar rep in the nation. So, you know, and then the next year, number one, number one. And, um, you know, so... And now what I've been able to do is I've been able to take guys through this process and I've been able to show them how to do it. Listen, Arizona is a saturated as shit market. Yeah. It is saturated. And not only that, you have a combination of the utility. The utility companies are trying to screw customers over, bro. They, mm -hmm. they really, they, they, they screw them over. And so what I've done is I've created a system that doesn't matter the conditions. It doesn't matter the circumstances. Leave mm -hmm. the excuses at the door. And I'm going to give you a proven blueprint on how to do this. And I've been able to duplicate myself over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. In fact, i got a guy. He's got no personality. You have a conversation with him. You can't really talk to him because he's like, uh, you know, he's like an introvert. He's like the opposite of a sales, uh, a sales guy. He's like just very he, – he, he, you talk to him. You don't think he's all that smart. He's very intelligent, but he's like very like introverted, right? Mm -hmm. and he, he made $450,000 last year, bro. You know how much he's going to make this year? He's going to probably make seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000. He's competing with me for the number one sales guy this year. This wow. is a guy that you wouldn't ever thought, but you know what he had? Grit, tenacity. This is the stuff. This is a common ingredient. So if I have, find someone with grit and tenacity, I don't care what type of personality you have. I don't care what your background is. Come from a family of opulence and wealth. I don't care if you come from, you know, dereliction and prisons and, and homelessness. I can take anybody, put them in this proven blueprint, and be able to train them to be successful. And this is time and time and time again that I've been able to prove this stuff. And so it's not a formula like, oh, I think it's going to work. It's a formula that does work mm. every single time. Ultimately, who's it up to? It's not up to me. Mm -hmm. It's up to them. Mm -hmm. Like, you can bypass all of the failures that I've made, right, in the solar industry. And I, and I can show you the tricks and the tactics and stuff to be able to do that. And the rewarding factor comes in now is, is sharing, right? Mm -hmm. I believe the best way that, we, that, that we're able to give back to the community, living up to my potential, is being able to share that with others and be able to transform people's lives and uh, be able to identify with where I've come from to where I'm at today and realize that anybody can do this. Anybody. There's not anybody. If you're sitting at home and you're like making $100,000 a year or making $40,000 a year, it doesn't matter. Everybody has this opportunity. It is a solar gold rush right now. Literally, solar gold rush. And it's yeah. a win-win-win. When do you find that? If you, car sales, yeah. you have to extract money out of people's pocket. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right? You're like, oh, this car's going to be $65,000. Well, the people are like, oh, it's a liability. Solar, dude, it's an asset, bro, because they're just replacing their utility mm -hmm. bill. And they get to own win. something. So it's a win-win-win, right? And so this is kind of like the industry. This is why I love that kind of God led me to this industry. I'm thankful for COVID. I used to hate it and be resentful about it and talk a bunch of shit about it, about all the people wearing masks and being social distancing. But now I'm like, dude, if it wasn't for that, what would I be doing? Would I be owning a alarm company, making $250,000 a year? What would I be doing? Last year, I cleared $1.8 million. The year before that was 1.4, dude. These are unfathomable numbers, right? Unfathomable for a guy that was eating out of dumpsters not even 25 years ago. Dude, number one, everybody right now, make sure you go to Instagram, you follow him, Luke Ward Official. Is that right? Yep. At Luke Ward Official. Make sure you go follow him. Number two, there's going to be two, two things I want to say to, to actually three different types of people, three things. Number one, if you're in solar, okay, and you're not making a million a year, if you're in solar, that means you're currently selling solar, and you're not making a million a year, you'd be an absolute idiot to not click on the link below right now and learn everything that this guy knows. That's going to be number one. Number two, if you are in solar and you want to really kill it and go to new levels, okay, you probably got a great company. I always say being around good organizations, being around good leaderships, you don't have to switch companies to make more money, okay? Sometimes you just need to learn how to be the best at it. Kobe Bryant, um, he had an NBA basketball coach. He was in the NBA. He also coached with Tim Grover. Yep. Okay, Tim Grover, he wanted to be better than everybody else, so he had two coaches. I think people are like, oh, well, we have training in our company. Yeah. Dude, listen to me. The play that you're currently running right now is the money you're currently making. So if you want to make more money, like he said, I made 1.8. He's in the field now. He works now. He coaches because he loves changing people's lives. Two years ago, when he saw that one of his guys that he was training was on that stage, and then last year, four of them are on there, he's like, dude, I'm obsessed with making people great. How many people are lined up right now to make you great? How many people are lined up to make you great? Look to the left, look to the right. A lot of the times, there's not a lot of people lined up to make you great. Number two, who is qualified to really teach you? I always say there's applicant teachers and there's theory teachers. Right. There's a lot of theory teachers in yeah. the industry right now. In theory, if you want to be great, this is what you should do. Guys, I've, I've never sold a solar panel in my life. You sell them every single day. Yeah. Every day. So you're in the field right now. You're an applicant teacher. You're in the field doing it. You said yeah. six I, days. I'm not like one of those guys that retired and showing people how to do it. Although I appreciate those guys like uh, Michael O'Donnell. Uh, I watch all his training videos. How I got good is I, I, I studied those training. So I bought into a training with my own money. Yeah. I bought in the training, and that was the best teacher. And here's the other thing is, like, I feel like if you go to a company, right, and you have a guy that's making $150,000 a year, yeah. and he teaches you, what, what's your income going to be? Is it going to exceed that? Now, now if you caught the, the, the training program I was belonged to, I was learning from the best of the best. Michael O'Donnell, amazing guy, good friend of mine now, absolutely yeah. incredible. He's the, he was the best of the best at the time. Best of the best. Number one in the nation. Four or five years running, right? I learned from him. I learned from all of the other guys that were the best of the best because they, I bought into a training program. I bought with my own personal money. Uh -huh. And I didn't have to learn from the scrub. It was a good thing I didn't have somebody teaching me because nobody at that company could have showed me what I was able to do. Uh -huh. I saw the basement. Okay, Michael O'Donnell sold 300 sales. What can I do? And I saw what was impossible, and they gave me the blueprint on success. Mm. And I just duplicated that. And I would do that every single day. I did a training module every single day for over 18 months. Every single day. Didn't miss a day, ever. Very consistent. I want patterns. everybody to remember what he just said, okay? Yeah. He said he found the greats, and then he studied everything they learned until he could figure out how to do it better, which is the goal. Right. Dude, when I teach people, I'm like, dude, my goal is to make you 20 times better than me. Right. Okay, because I didn't have me, okay? So now, but you got me now, so I'm going to make you 20 times better. So this guy's like, hey, man, I ran 1.8. I'm still in the field right now. I'm obsessed with making other people great. Who wants to be great? If that's you and you want to kill it, make sure that you guys do one simple thing. Understand what it takes. Dreams come with a price. If you don't pay the price, you don't get the dream. If you're running a play right now and you're not earning the kind of money this guy's talking about, you see his energy, you see his fire, you can tell he wears his heart on his sleeve, you can tell his intentions. Holy crap, man. Everybody needs a coach. This is a dude I want to coach me if I'm in solar. Period. So you guys, make sure you click on the link below. Make sure you get set up with him immediately. Welcome to your new life and your new paycheck and new results you've always wanted. So it's that simple. And then I would say, if you're in an industry right now and you want to make more money and you're like, dude, I want to kill it. I want to make more money. Let him teach you how to sell solar. Go get a job, crush it, make a lot of money. 
He said we're in the solar boom. This is like, this is the time, guys. It doesn't take 10 years to get ahead. Two good years can change your entire life. Two good years. And then, by the way, um, I think that, you know, you're always building your team. This isn't about you building your team. Right. But some of you guys could even not only be mentored and train with him to make a ton of money, you could also come and join his team, which is super awesome. I was asking him, I was like, what's the possibility of somebody, like if they, you know, proved to be a good student and they wanted to learn your stuff? And he's like, dude, listen, they could join my team. He's like, I'm game with that. And I just want to tell you guys, just like he moved from California to Arizona, I moved from Oklahoma to Arizona. Yeah. The best thing that ever happened to me was COVID. I don't know what's going on in your life. Everything runs in cycles, right. like we talked about earlier. Everything is patterns, everything is cycles. And if you're ready to break your pattern, break your cycle of what's currently going on, and you're listening to this guy's story and you're saying, like, hey, why not me? Like, why can't I have that? The big, bad, the big ass boat, the multi-million dollar house, you know, the freaking awesome marriage, be a great parent, you know, whatever it is, right? Like just freaking be alive and on fire. You hear the way he talks, like he loves his life. Well, why not you? So guys, make sure you understand the next step is simple. It's self-development. I mean, him talked about like how I built my life, how he built his life. It's the same avenue, self-development. But who do you want to learn from? Who's willing to teach you? Guys, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. I grabbed him because he's the best in the world at what he does. And icing on the cake, if you liked listening to him and you've made it this far, is to physically go click on the link. Make sure that you guys train with him. All I care about is you guys becoming great, okay? If you want to make a lot of money, what is a level 10 earning opportunity, okay? You don't even have to have a, a solar license, really. It's not like no, real estate. No it's not like real estate. It's not like insurance. If, if in order to get your insurance license... You can't have a felony. There's all these stipulations and all these businesses, but really in solar, if you got the skill, you go get a job, you make a lot of money, it's over. Mm -hmm. That's it, guys. You guys have all just been given an opportunity to have your way out and become financially successful, and this guy will teach you, man. So I just want to tell you, number one, anything you want to say to anybody watching this, maybe somebody that's been through a grind, you started out going through the grind, I love your story, I love who you are, you're an overcomer, you're a, a Christian, you love God, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, dude, you love your family, nothing's impossible, you're a fighter, you're a grinder, you're a change man, and by the way, like, you're just getting warmed up. Yeah. Like, I can tell you're just getting warmed up. Yeah. What would you say to anybody watching this, right, that's like, man, I don't know, stuff like that doesn't happen to me, I, you know, I, becoming a millionaire... I mean, dude, listen, that stuff doesn't happen for me. Like from you sleeping on benches, like doing drugs, being in and out of jail, you have, you had every reason to quit. Right. Right. Like, like why should, like, like just, how do we want to end this? I want you to just punch him in the mouth. That's a, good, that's a great question. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Bottom line, like, you know, you come from some, there's people that have more adverse lives than I have. There's people that have a cushier life than I have, but. I, you know, I look for people that are creating good things. I look at you, man. Like what you're doing is absolutely amazing. You're setting the, the the bar for what's possible, right? And so rather than look at like all of their excuses and reasons, and I call it case shit radio, the players, you can't do that. They're, they're different, blah, blah, blah. Looking and seeing what someone's created in their life and understanding and knowing that they, they just got the information and they went through it. They put backed it up with action. Action, action solves everything. Don't get paralysis through analysis. Action. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Just do it, man. Cost money, do it. You know, like the, the, the relationships and stuff, if, if you're willing to put your money where your mouth is, too, that's a big deal, right? I'm talking to you, bro. Me, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of money that comes down to it. But listen, am I a man of action or am I a man of just going to think about it and trying to figure this stuff out? But if I can do it, anybody can do it. And look for someone that has a blueprint. Might not be me. You could go choose somebody else. Michael O'Donnell does a great training program. He's amazing. Love that guy. You know, there's other guys in the space that are doing this. But look for someone that's succeeding at a very high level. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel. All you have to do is duplicate what somebody else has done. Yeah, but see, I like your energy. I want to tell you guys this. Like, listen to me. If it was me and I was watching <laughs> this, if it was me and I was watching this and I wasn't making at least a million a year, okay, listen to me. And this opportunity existed, and I could literally train with this guy, his energy, the way that he thinks, the way that he believes, how he overcome adversity, all the shit he's been through, and I can tell that he wears his heart on his sleeve and he cares. I want to learn from this guy. I want to know everything he knows. I want to know how he speaks, how he talks, how he presents. I want to know how he sells. I want to know how he hits the doors. I want to know how he closes. I want to know it all. I want to know how he keeps the cancellation rate low. I want to know everything. I want to, if he knows it, which he shares it with you, I want to know it. The mindset. I want to know it all. I want to know everything that he knows. And by the way, 
it took you 20, 30 years and going through hell to learn all this. Yeah. And we're in an era that you guys can learn it all right now. Yeah. And you don't have to go through hell. And you don't have to keep losing. And you don't have to keep getting small checks. So I just want to tell you guys, the information today that he gave you, I know it changed your life. I know that inspired you to want to reach for more. So now what do we do? We just like go back to our own life and be like, damn, that was fire. No, dude, you'd go total immersion. You dive into his training program. You learn everything that he knows. And then now you'll get the results. And now you get the life. And I want you to become the greatest student that ever existed from him. So guys, do me a favor. Make sure you purchase the training program. That's what we do on our channel. We self-develop. We're not afraid to spend money. We bet the farm risk takers. We know this. The biggest risk is doing nothing at all and staying the same. In a world where everybody just stays the same and hope and wishes, this is how dependable success happens. This is how you break records. And then also, I want you to make sure that you tag him once you buy his training. Tag him on social media, Luke Ward Official. And then when you're crushing it and killing it, make sure you guys DM him, okay? Go send him a message. Tell him that he changed your life. You guys can connect. And I appreciate you being out, yeah. man. This is just the beginning. Trust me, if you guys seeing this guy, he's about to blow up in the space. So I'm looking forward to, to and I cheer you on to go really far because we need more leaders. The families are starving for leaders. The world's starving for leaders. Businesses are starving for leaders. And a lot of people don't have good examples. And I think one of the reasons why you ran astray and you got caught in a shit cycle, and so did I, is because we didn't really have any good leaders. So, like, guys, like, I don't care what's going on in your life. You just got an opportunity to plug into a great leader, okay? So guys, kill it. Appreciate it. Much love, man. Let's go. We'll see you in the next, the next video. Guys. Hey guys, I just want to tell you you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.